Dispenser going up. Well, I guess that'll do. As I sit down to write my thoughts on the last item in the Engineer Stock Weapons trilogy, I realize that up until now, I've portrayed the concept of a stock weapon as a specific thing. Typically, a stock weapon is supposed to be viewed as the baseline for the slot that it's equipped in. It's intended to be the perfect generalist approach to a typical match of Team Fortress 2. But we all know that in reality, when it comes to quite a lot of stock weapons across all classes, that is often not the case. While some unlocks are considered to be situational strong while generally weak, there are some that are just so powerful that it leaves the stock option in the dust. This is evident in so many, many, many cases across many classes in their respective equipment slots, some more debatable than others, and when it comes to the engineer's melee slot, I'd say that the idea that the stock wrench behaves exactly how a stock weapon is intended to behave in comparison to the unlocks, I'd say that on paper, yes, that is probably true. The stock wrench does exactly what it's supposed to do. It constructs and repairs buildings, it removes sappers, it does 65 damage, no bells and whistles, it just does what the engineer is supposed to do. However, despite it conceptually behaving like a stock weapon, I personally believe that it suffers from unlock envy in the same way that items like the bone saw and the fire axe do. And I believe this is entirely because of my own personal playstyle and the way that I approach engineer in TF2. So strap in, in order for me to review the stock wrench effectively, I'm going to have to explain in detail why I think it's actually the worst option in every case, starting now. So let's start by talking about what an engineer does literally every time he plays a round of TF2. He builds things. The engineer's buildings do not just pop into existence, they need to be constructed and upgraded, and he needs to do this many, many times during a typical round. The gameplay loop of engineer is to set up, repair, maintain, get overrun, retreat, and repeat. And in reality, unless you're setting up on last where nobody will hurt you, your buildings are going to be destroyed. You will always have to rebuild your stuff. It's almost always an inevitability during a well-balanced match of TF2. And that is where the JAG comes in. The JAG is legitimately a borderline busted unlock that allows you to be relentless in rebuilding and upgrading your stuff to the point where it's usually going to be the default option for when you need to set everything up. The Engineer is a weird class where the longer he's left alone to his own devices, the more powerful he becomes, and the JAG expedites that process by a significant amount. Even the downsides tend to complement the upsides. Not being able to maintain your buildings as reliably compared to other wrenches only really plays into the idea around being able to resurrect buildings a few seconds later. With the stock wrench, you might be able to heal your buildings more effectively or possibly save a building from a sapper in time, but the difference is all around pretty negligible compared to how much faster it is to fully upgrade all of your buildings. Basically, it's the difference between the enemy having to put one extra rocket into your gun to take it down and the enemy push being met with a level 2 sentry only 10 seconds after they took it down the first time. Now, looking back at the itinerary for the engineer's typical day out on the battlefield, there is a specific section where the JAG is situationally worse, and that is specifically when all of your buildings are completely upgraded to level 3, and you now need to focus on maintaining. This usually happens right at the very beginning of the round on payload or attack defend, and it is here where you might think that the stock wrench would be the most practical to use since everything is already built. However, I believe that it's in these situations where the Eureka effect is actually a more practical wrench to use than stock. Now, it's no secret by now that I love the Eureka effect, but I have a feeling that most people probably assume that the main reason I use it is to ninjineer and nothing else. But in reality, that's probably the thing I use it for the least. When setting up on the first point, it's pretty common to use the JAG effect rollout to get everything to level 3 and in place before the round starts, but at the end of setup, I don't end up in position holding the JAG. I keep using the Eureka effect. Not only is it able to maintain buildings just as well as the stock wrench can, but the ability to teleport to and from spawn whenever you like allows you to have a very good amount of self-preservation, which is of the utmost importance on Engineer, and especially on the first point of payload or attack defense 
maps. Now, I absolutely love most of the payload maps in TF2. I think it's a great pub game mode and, and it's clear that a lot of people love it as well. But the biggest issue payload has is that it can be very, very easy to snowball a successful push to the first point into a steamroll all the way to last. And a big catalyst for those steamrolls is the engineer dying after his buildings get overrun. The Eureka effect not only allows you to tank your buildings and destroy sappers better than the Jag, but it also gives you a reliable get out of first card that you can play when things get a little too spicy and you need to start setting up on second. Being able to teleport back to spawn can allow you to single-handedly mitigate or straight up prevent steamrolls, and that's something that the stock wrench simply cannot do. Another very common situation in which the Eureka effect has power over the stock is its insane ability to effectively maintain your teleporter. A lot of players will often make it their mission to jump behind enemy lines and go to your spawn door to destroy the teleporter entrance, and the Eureka effect allows you to easily replace the teleporter entrance, something that would require you to completely abandon your post for over a full minute in a lot of cases with the stock wrench equipped. Even if a spy manages to destroy both the entrance and exit, the Eureka effect allows you to completely replace it while effectively maintaining your nest, as opposed to being forced to walk all the way back to spawn with the stock wrench. Overall, the farther away from spawn you are, or heck, the further away from any reliable metal source you are, the more useful the Eureka effect becomes, and those situations are so, so common in a typical game that the stock wrench becomes a bit of a downgrade more often than you'd expect. Well, you might be thinking that now is the time for me to talk about the final common situation in an engineer's life, the one where the stock wrench finally makes the most sense to bust out. Imagine this, you're defending the last point on an attack defend or a a payload map. Heck, you might even be defending the last point of a 5 CP map. You've already used the Jag to upgrade everything to level 3, so the Jag has now served its purpose. Your spawn room is practically a few steps away, and you're not maintaining a teleporter that goes anywhere important, so the Eureka effect is now useless. Surely, now is where you can use the stock wrench to its full potential, right? Uh, well, you know, sure. I guess. But why not just use the Southern Hospitality instead? Like, the only real downside is that you don't get random crits, which literally makes it a straight upgrade in community servers, like mine, that have them disabled. And when you're a hop, skip, and a jump away from the resupply cabinet, getting set on fire by a flare or chased by a suicidal pyro is the least of your worries. So you might as well just take the bleed on hit just in case a spy gets close to you. Even though it's such a pointless upside, it's technically still better than the stock wrench in that situation. I mean, you could even justify using the Eureka effect when defending last with a full level 3 setup since the downside of getting less metal from packs means nothing when you're working entirely off of the resupply cabinet anyway. I mean, I've racked my brain for any common situation where the stock wrench would be more useful to me than any of the other level 3 wrenches. I haven't mentioned the gunslinger and I'm not going to bother talking about it because that's not really a consideration when comparing unlocks to the stock wrench because it's just too different. But anyway, I mean, it's not like using the stock wrench would directly punish someone for using it. It's still an entirely fine wrench to use if you don't really care too much about making the most out of your options and min-maxing your effectiveness like I do. But when it comes down to it, there's not a single good reason to use stock over any other of Engineer's options in the melee slot. Just kidding. There is one undisputed situation where the stock wrench shines above the rest, and that's in man versus machine. Because of your ability to use upgrades to increase your wrench's swing speed, and even buy canteens that allow you to instantly upgrade all of your buildings to level 3 for only 50 credits, the Jag's usefulness suffers greatly in MVM. Teleporting to spawn is an ability that you can also purchase at the upgrade station to be used by not only yourself, but your entire team, so the Eureka effect also makes no sense, and there's no reason to try and inflict bleed on a robot when there are literally dozens of much less suicidal ways to damage them, so the Southern Hospitality is out, and using the Gunslinger in MVM is a good way to get vote kicked. Mini sentry. So that just leaves us with the stock wrench, which it turns out is the most strong in this situation. It just happens to be in an alternative PvE game mode. <laughs> hey, at least I can show off my Australian to the people who apparently want them the most, right? So there we are. While I wouldn't call the stock wrench a bad weapon per se, I can't really get around personally labeling it as the worst wrench when I compare its usefulness to the other options. Which is weird because normally when I think that there's a pretty clear-cut worst version of something, I like to try and come up with a good way to fix it. But in the 
the case of a stock item, it's not like you can buff it or anything, and I certainly don't think the other unlocks should be nerfed to make the stock more appealing by comparison. I actually think the engineer's unlocks are pretty balanced right now. So strangely enough, the stock wrench is bad, and that's okay. I don't really mind it. Much like I'm sure people don't mind that the fire axe isn't very good, it's boring, basic, and generalist to a fault, but I guess someone's gotta take the lame role so that the others can have fun. So for that, I'm glad that the stock wrench exists, because without it, the engineer wouldn't exist. And uh, I don't know if you can tell, but I like the engineer. So thus concludes the final video in the Engineer Stock Weapon Review Trilogy. Make sure you go check out the other two if you haven't already. And uh, thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you nieces and nephews next time. Bye-bye.